Dunzi. You so good at Rocket League. I want you to be my boy. Previously on the tutorials. Jen, I'm I'm sorry. I know I screwed up, but I'm I'm trying and I love you. Don't give me that look, Jen. This ain't easy for me. Get your life together, Michael. Get off each other! Troy, what's up, man? Touch me. Yo, C-Block. You seen Michael? Michael? Man, I think I seen him heading up to Urban Nightclub. Get the hell out of my way. Michael? Michael! Michael! As it's probably why you're here, section one is all about shot taking. The boring tactical stuff can come after. The long shot. It's mainly effective against low level keepers and open goals, which are pretty much the same thing, am I right? Guys? The following advice applies mainly to long shots. Although anyone silver or above should be able to keep them out, good long shots can lead to rebounds and sustained pressure. Just make sure that you always assume the keeper is going to make the save. That way you'll be on hand to win the rebound. Okay, so, let's say the ball's rolling your way in the centre of the pitch. Now there's nothing wrong with a speculative long shot if you follow it up. But what's the difference between an easily savable shot and one that the keeper can't clear? The answer to that is the amount of arc on the ball and the power you're able to generate. Whether you're supersonic or still accelerating, you can generate different amounts of arc by hitting the ball in certain places. Watch how it travels in these different clips. Here, dodging at the last possible second means we hit the ball at a slightly higher point than we would by just driving into it. It's a really slight height difference, but look how much it makes the ball arc. In this clip, we're already supersonic. Instead of dodging, we jump at the last possible second. Lo and behold, the ball arcs towards our opponent's goal in exactly the same way. This shows that, when supersonic, dodging and single jumping have the same effect on both the arc of the ball and, as dodging is no faster than travelling supersonic anyway, your power. Dodging does allow you to greater manipulate the direction that the ball travels in though, which we'll get onto in a sec. But for now, understand that dodging isn't necessarily the only way to take a hard, accurate and, most importantly in my opinion, art shot. Normally though, you'll see pro players dodging into pretty much every shot they take, and the reason they do that is that they know the timing required to arc the ball low, medium or high. Now the theory of this is relatively simple, and we'll show you it now. Drive up to the ball and just do a single jump. Just before your car is above the ball, dodge forwards. Obviously, it's going to catch the top of the ball, and the ball will stay grounded and just trickle along the floor. A less exaggerated form of this technique allows us to keep shots low or hit them at medium height or shoot the ball pretty much directly upwards and over a keeper from close range by dodging at the last possible moment. As your dodging improves, you can hugely alter the ball's direction and speed. Practice doing early, regular and late dodges to see the effects that each has on the ball. Jump slightly to one side of the ball and then dodge inwards to change its direction, like so. Practicing this can lead to gorgeous shots that the keeper will not see coming. A great example is Ryan's world famous, or at least I like them, angle shots. When he's at a tight angle, he likes to power the ball into the goal and time it so that the ball is still rising when it hits the back of the theoretical net. I've had those shots taken against me and they are very, very hard to save. So let's see exactly what he does in slow-mo. Watch when he hits it and what angle he hits it at. If the ball is bouncing, similar theories apply but with trickier timing. If it's rising, it becomes easier to hit the lower half of the ball and arc it forwards. Careful when shooting a bouncing ball though, because if you mistime your jump, you'll miss the ball's sweet spot. Now, as we've established, that sweet spot always changes, but let's say a ball's bouncing upwards and you need to keep it down to take a shot. You're going to need to jump earlier than you would if it was just stuck to the floor. If you don't, then by the time you reach the ball, it will have risen, and you'll connect with the lower half of the ball, and unwittingly send it upwards. 
Personally, I often like to double jump into the ball, performing my second jump nice and late to generate a tiny amount of extra little power if I'm not already going supersonic. Other players, though, prefer to jump early and then dodge into the ball in mid-air at the last possible second. Both techniques can lead to nicely shaped shots. The main advantage of dodging instead of jumping, though, is that you can jump a long time before you meet the ball, wait for the perfect moment, and then dodge into it when everything is lined up perfectly. That also means that you can jump slightly to the left or right of the ball and then dodge towards it to change the angle of the ball. Now, it's worth mentioning now that we're already working on a dodging tutorial that will expand upon these points and really delve into the game's somewhat bewildering physics, as you'll see. If the ball's far away from the goal, the most power you're ever going to generate is on the half volley. If you can, try and connect for the ball a split second after it lands. This is pretty much exactly on its bounce, either with a dodge or a single or double jump if you're going fast enough. If you hit it sweetly, you can get some serious distance and power on the ball. Incidentally, this also makes the half volley the most effective way to make a defensive clearance in one hit. Having the time and space to half volley is actually more common than you'd think, but obviously you have to be 100% sure that no one's around you before you dawdle and wait for the ball to drop. Otherwise, someone's going to nip in ahead of you and get it. Long shots are predictable. Here are some cooler ways to score. The tap and smash involves driving into the ball without jumping, lining up your car, then aerialing after it to tip it over any onrushing defenders and into the net. Tricky to defend and beautiful to witness, the tap and smash is a firm favourite of the pros. As the ball is travelling directly in front of you, it's even fairly simple to get a second aerial hit just after your first. All you have to do is keep control of your car after you make your first connection and readjust on the fly. The tap and smash wall hit is an advanced form of the tap and smash. Instead of looping the ball up and into the air, you're aiming for the area directly above the goal. As soon as it's travelling, aerial after the ball and hit it in on the rebound. The trickiest part of this shot is judging the shot off the wall. If you're in the lower rankings, try waiting for it to drop back over the goal and simply double jumping over the keeper. Sadly, if you're in gold or above, it will probably have been cleared by then, so you really should practice hitting it as early as possible after it hits the wall. Even if you don't score, you can take the unfortunate goalkeeper out the game, and hopefully one of your teammates will be there ready to tap it in. The dribble. It's important enough in its own right that it can and it will have its very own subpar bit NHD tutorial. For now though, we'll say that they're a great way to keep control of the ball, gain territory, and slow the game down if you want to. Not to mention the chance to make your opponents look like fools, which is always fun. To get started on dribbling, practice knocking the ball side to side and getting it to stick to the side of your car and rolling it around. Practice getting it onto your roof and driving forward. Remember that when you dribble, every inch you can travel gains territory. When your opponent eventually forces a 50-50, make sure you dodge at the last second. Your opponent's probably going to do the same, and there's every chance that the ball will balloon upwards and give your teammates an opportunity for a shot. If the ball's rolling up the wall, it should be obvious if it's going to curl out into the centre of the pitch. If it is, start aerialing before it does. You'll either beat your opponents to the ball and gain some serious territory, or, if you're good enough, you can even get off a nice aerial shot. If it's sticking to the wall, you can wall ride and jump when necessary. Again, more to come in future videos, and they're important, because confident wall play is what really separates the Cookses from the Cool Culls. What? Who? Who wrote? Who wrote this? The half volley is the likeliest way to score from your own half. Dodge into the ball just after it lands, and you'll clear it with all sorts of momentum. Even if you can't send it goal bound, it's the best way to clear the ball in general. Way too often in standard solo do we see players try to aerial the ball unnecessarily. If no one is around you, take your time and hit it at the perfect moment. Now we know we mentioned the half volley before, but it's worth mentioning again. With these moves under your belt, you'll find yourself putting opponents under more pressure than ever before. But just shooting isn't enough. Sometimes, you're going to need an improvement on your general attacking play. Hey, that's a sweet name for a section! Regular shots, while great on a night out, won't necessarily mean more goals in Rocket League. If the opposing keeper is making your life hell, you'll need to bring your idiot teammates into play. Let's see what happens here when I pick up the ball from midfield. Instead of whacking it aimlessly in the direction of the goal, I dribble it up the corner. Now, normally the keeper would tackle me on the wall, but as I plan ahead and nip it in front of him, I'm able to take him out the game and roll a ball along the goal line. 
Not even my idiot teammate can miss that. If your teammate's in space, you needn't even use the wall. Just hit it towards them and away their redirect. Beautiful goals can be scored just by looking for a teammate before you make a clearance. As soon as you hit it their way, and depending on where your third teammate is, bomb forward, try and take advantage of the sick touchdown they're inevitably about to get and whack it home. If it's on the wall, the same principle applies. You're rarely able to score by jumping off the wall, unless you're Cooksey. Unless you're Cooksey. <clears throat> but with a bit of practice, it's not too difficult to send it into the mixer, as it were, and make life hard for your opponents. Like we said, our wall video is coming right up, so we're being intentionally brief here. In our opinion, attacking play in Rocket League is more about constant pressure than bullet goals. Our final section outlines how to apply just that, with or without the ball. If you lose the ball up top, there's rarely a need to head straight back to the fence to pick up boost. In fact, one of the most common Rocket League misconceptions is that you can't attack without boost. If you're attacking without boost, you can still get in your opponent's faces, you can still dodge into them, you can bash them, you can get as many awkward little touches as you can to stop them booting it into your danger zone. Remember, the best clearance is a half volley. We'll make sure they rarely have the time to get one of their own. Depending on how desperately you need a goal, and your own style of play, you should usually leave one player back to capitalise on any half clearances. If the ball does slip past you, your teammates can take over, finally allowing you to retreat. But when that does happen, and it will, you shouldn't necessarily head back to your own goal for boost. Instead, look for the boost pill on the halfway line and then turn back around, ready to get back into the action, yet far back enough that you can turn and defend if you need to. Eventually, the ball might pop out for you to start attacking again. Starving your opponents of boost is one of the best ways to turn pressure into goals. If they can't aerial, and you can, or in the lower levels, if they aren't as fast as you, you are at a massive, massive advantage. Always, always take your opponent's boost pills every opportunity you can. Trust us, it will screw them over more than you can know. Good luck. Godspeed. And we'll leave you with a few extra tips because we're so bloody generous. power you generate depends on where on your car the ball hits. As a rough guide, the car's nose provides more power than its side, which is more powerful than its roof, and then finally its wheels. Seriously, do what you can to ever avoid hitting it with your wheels if you want to generate any power. There's one time where a weak head is useful though. If you're above the goal and you need to knock it down directly below you, hitting it with your wheels is a great way to cushion the ball. If your time is good enough, you can generate crazy speed when the ball's travelling perpendicular, or sideways, for those of us who have their education in America, to the car. Use the jump shot or dodge technique from section 1 in this situation. Team Rocket, out.